Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, Oakland native, and curious about cloning. I'm also a big fan of history. I love untold tales, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share a few of my favorite deep cuts with you, so let's take a look at today's stories. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon I'm gonna teach you stuff, no it won't be tough Gonna go a year till you've had enough It's 365 Today in 1997, the world said hello to a different dolly This dolly was not Barbra Streisand playing a widowed matchmaker But instead, a cloned sheep the world's first mammal cloned from an adult cell. Dolly was announced on February 22nd by the Roslyn Institute in Scotland, where she'd been bred from the genes of a six-year-old ewe. The cells were taken from the ewe via a somatic cell nuclear transfer. Yeah, I'm not really totally sure what that is either, but anyways, basically, the cell nucleus from an adult was transferred into an unfertilized egg whose nucleus had been previously removed. To instigate cell division, it was shocked in the lab and then placed into the body of a surrogate mother. Dolly was born on July 5th, 1996, and she was a Finn Dorset sheep. They waited to introduce her to the world to make sure she was surviving and healthy. Technically, Dolly had three mothers. One had provided the egg, another donated DNA, and the third was a surrogate who carried the embryo. Upon her birth, genetic testing revealed that Dolly was genetically identical to the donor who donated the DNA. During the time that the scientists at Roslyn were working to create Dolly, they also tried to breed 277 other cloned sheep. Dolly was the only one to survive. Dolly the sheep was named after Dolly Parton, the iconic singer. A mammary cell was used for the cloning process, and the scientists called it an affectionate tribute to the buxom singer. All right, well, I don't know if that's the tribute I'd give, but I see that they meant it affectionately. For a little lamb, Dolly sure started a lot of debate. Scientists and academics began serious discussions about what it meant to interfere with genetics at this level and to what degree it was unethical. Some compared it to playing God. The scientists that worked on Dolly countered that, with saying that cloning could be used to find cures to genetic diseases. Dolly was featured on the cover of Time magazine, and then President Bill Clinton called upon experts to share their belief on the implications of her birth. Of course, cloning a sheep couldn't help but make people think about the possibility of cloning a human. But compared to the relatively innocuous practice of cloning a farm animal, cloning humans is something that not many scientists support. That's part of what made Dolly so controversial. A sheep seemed like a slippery slope to humans, which is an option scientists weren't and still aren't ready to confront. Dolly ended up spending her entire life at the Roslyn Institute, never moving to a farm to live a life like a regular sheep. She even slept indoors because of security concerns. She was mated with a Welsh mountain ram called David, and she mothered six lambs over three years. The lambs were named Cotton, Darcy, Lucy, Rosie, Sally, and Bonnie. Sadly, Dolly died in 2003. Though the lifespans of sheep of course differ from the lifespans of humans, six years old seems still pretty young for her to die. Dolly had contracted a lung infection that was normal for sheep, but usually only older sheep. When they autopsied her body after she died, it did seem that the sheep had prematurely aged, which brought in even more complications to the idea of cloning. What if premature age was always a side effect? Is it moral to breed animals bound for a potential early death? In the years since cloning birthed Dolly, other farm animals have been cloned as well like horses and cattle. A mountain goat was cloned in Spain in 2009 that experts had believed was already extinct. The clone ended up dying not long after it was born, but it was still monumental as the first time an extinct animal was cloned. The debate over cloning is complicated. Supporters tout the ability to clone endangered species and that animals for lab testing could be created without the expense and complications of breeding. On the other hand, animal conservationists say that the ability to clone endangered species isn't all it's cracked up to be, because the genetic material would be so similar that biological diversity would be low, and in the long run, that wouldn't help the species come back from endangerment. After she died, Dolly's body was stuffed and mounted and now rests at the National Museum of Scotland in Edinburgh. In January of 2018, two monkeys were cloned in Shanghai, using the same techniques that were used to clone Dolly. Only time will tell what the future of cloning will be, and whether or not more animals, and maybe one day, 
humans, will be the subjects of further cloning. And now for today's music fact, we have Mia Gladstone here to talk about this day in her life. On February 22nd, 2017, I began to experience the love state, as I call it. I arrived in Chillicothe, Ohio for a five-week audio engineering program, and I had just graduated high school, and it was my first time really on my own. Coming from the New York area, being in Southern Ohio was a huge culture shock, but it ultimately led me to this major transformation. I went vegan. I found myself surrounded by people with an energy I had never experienced. They were open-minded and compassionate and inviting. Being in their presence but not really knowing each other is what led me to this deep state of isolation where I spent time reflecting on how I had treated people throughout my life and how I could move going forward. I began to rid myself of these beliefs and judgments that had always held me back and I saw life in a very different way. I tapped into the true meaning of universal love and I started to live a very different reality. It was incredibly therapeutic and it all began February 22nd. And now for our final segment of the show, I'm going to be going into my own photo archives to see what I was up to on a February 22nd in my life. On February 22nd, 2018, I took a screenshot of my Zodiac chart um, and the description that it left. And I think it's still very relevant to the stuff that I tend to write my music about. Um, In my Zodiac chart, I think it was, uh, I did this on like Cafe Astrology or something online. It said, She lacks firmness and can be a sucker for a sob story. She likes to live in a dream in the world of imagination and can hope so much that reality checks can be brutal. Um, I feel like if you haven't listened to my music, in which case you should definitely go get on that. I spend a lot of time writing about dreams and I think for some reason I, I just really think a lot about the experience of living in a fantasy and spending a lot of time wishing and hoping for something that maybe isn't real. Um, and I, I, when I read that in 2018, I was like, that's ridiculous. Ha ha. Like, sure, probably kind of true, but you know what? I'll get better at that. I don't know if I've gotten better at that. I think I, in ways I have accepted reality a little bit more firmly than I used to, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm still writing songs about dreams. Not a bad thing though. Thanks for going back in time with me and remember to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. You can come back tomorrow for more facts from yesterday. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough.